You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. And good evening. Time for Startup Talk from Indian River State College with Tom Kendrick. Thank you, sir, and welcome to another segment and installment of Startup Talk, the show designed to assist and help Treasure and Research Coast residents who want to start, grow, or accelerate their business. As I always say, what a great place it is to own and operate a business along the beautiful Research and Treasure Coast. We will spend time during our hour together this evening to highlight and create awareness regarding the very powerful and robust business assistance and support programs that exist right here in our community at our very own Indian River State College. I am Tom Kindred, and I serve the community as the regional director for the Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Our show today, as always, is powered by the Florida SBDC at IRSC and the great folks at Express Printing of Port St. Lucie. So, Greg, how are you this evening? Doing well. All right. Uh, everything all right uh, in uh, radio world here at WPSL? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You haven't been in the studio since we dynamited it. That's, I, I do see some changes. <laughs> it, um, <laughs> yes, got rid is... of about uh, maybe 180 miles of cable. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. It's all digital. No, it's 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 looking uh, looking digital. Looks like a big uh, Alexa in here is what yeah. it looks well, like. Well, it's we're sending to Alexa, <laughs> so might as well sound like. It. <laughs> well, it does look nice. Well, I'm glad uh, you guys are getting some updates in here, and uh, and I see some uh, some uh, television equipment and some cameras in here. So we are we are uh, not only are we on the um, radio airwaves, but uh, Startup Talk is also out there in video. It's in the studio. It's on YouTube on WPSL TV. I yep. know all my yep. uh, you know when guests come in now, I I sort of sometimes forget to tell them we're also on TV. So they they come in and they they scram. They didn't realize. They thought it was just radio, and and they uh, they realized that they uh, maybe if they had a bad hair day, they they've got to get that fixed up before. Yeah, you uh, had a couple surfers in here <laughs> once, as I remember. Yeah. So yeah, they all realized. Well, we're going to be on TV too, so we got to get fixed up. So anyway, studio looks nice. I'm glad you've got some uh, got some updates in here. Um, real quickly, uh, we've got uh, two great guests. I, I'm looking forward to the conversation again tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, a subject that we've talked about a number of times, but it is an, it's an important topic um, as businesses continue to grow and accelerate and the economies uh, come back around. Um, you know, people are facing uh, some of the same old problems at business, a lot of stress. we uh, doing more with less in terms of employees, so um, a lot more responsibility for folks. So we're going to talk again a little bit tonight about about culture uh, in in uh, in businesses and and um, the demands on our employees and how to deal with our employees and and we've really got uh, a, a great guest with us this evening we've got a young lady by the name of Julie Murphy and uh, Julie is a um, I, I'm I'm gonna say an expert in the area of meditation yoga and how to deal with stress in the workplace and you, you've come to the right place tonight, uh, Julie. This is a stressful place. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you. And we also have with us um, um, a good friend of mine and uh, an associate. Uh, we've got the associate director of the Florida SBDC at IRSC. We've got Mrs. Catherine Colhane. Welcome to the show again, Catherine. Hi, happy to be back. So uh, real quickly, before we get started with our conversation about uh, dealing with all that stress in business, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. I got just a couple of quick announcements about uh, a few things going on at the college. Uh, Monday night, August the 20th, we've got the big blue versus gold volleyball match. Uh, the event is the kickoff event to the sports season um, for the uh, Pioneer Athletics, the volleyball team under the direction of head coach uh, Stephanie Skidmore and assistant coach Tony Glistner. We'll team up. I love this game. We'll team up with guest coaches, Dr. Ed Massey. Ooh. and doc, That's right. Ooh. Coach Massey, as we'll call him on Monday night. Um, so Dr. Ed Massey and Mr. Frank Watkins will serve as coaches. They've got a special guest. Congressman Brian Mass is going to be at the game uh, Monday evening. Uh, they're going to they're play their inner squad match. It's a, really a lot of fun. I never miss this game. 
uh, with the uh, with the Pioneer uh, volleyball team. So uh, if you're coming out, uh, this will be the final tune-up as the team prepares for the regular season. And uh, as we start a new academic year, uh, if you're coming out to the game, uh, if you if you if you think about it, bring bring a couple of uh, items, canned food items, uh, as they're restocking the Pioneer Pantry. Uh, many students, um, you know, that uh, that attend any member state college are in need of assistance, and this is a great chance to give them a fresh start heading into the 18-19 academic year. So, a lot of fun uh, Monday night uh, at the gym on main campus here in Fort Pierce. 5:30 is the start of the game. So, a lot of fun. Encourage you to come out and watch that. We've got a couple of upcoming classes uh, for you. We've got Facebook Intensive, uh, including Facebook Live. Uh, this is a six-hour class taught by one of our standout instructors, uh, Leanna Haig. This will be on main campus August the 21st um, through August the 23rd, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12. Uh, so, great class. Uh, Facebook Intensive. Um, and then we are they got still in business? Facebook? Yeah. I believe they are. Oh, they yes, are. They okay. are still in business. I'm just yeah. curious. And then we've got a, a Excel Advanced. Uh, this advanced class focuses on the tables, the pivot tables, the macros, the formulas, and all the functions you need to know to maneuver your way around Excel. A great instructor, uh, Mr. Bob Gibson, will teach that class. Main campus, Fort Pierce, that is August the 28th through September the 4th, Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 6 to 9 p.m. So if you want to learn how to operate Excel to, to better manage your business, great class. We've also got a, a new New round of the Business Acceleration Program coming up in Martin County in the city of Stewart. Uh, it's all going to get underway September the 11th. Again, uh, 10 nights um, of training, uh, Tuesday evenings from 6 to 9, every Tuesday evening for 10 evenings. Uh, going to take folks through all kinds of business training, uh, introduction to Internet marketing, customer engagement, exceptional customer service, time management, sales and marketing for your business, small business finance. So all kinds of classes going on. That is the Business Accelerator Program brought to you by Indian River State College, the Florida SBDC, the Corporate and Community Training Institute, and the Martin County BDB. So sponsored by... Um, uh, the city of Stewart and Martin County. So a lot of great uh, participants in that program. So I encourage you to get involved, getting underway on September the 11th. Sign up early. Yes. Because I remember that place was packed. Yeah, good, good, good program. And just a, a quick note, uh, there is a big expansion of a Martin County manufacturer, which is going to mean uh, more than 100 new jobs. Uh, what started as a small pressure washing business before growing into a global leader whose innovative machinery ensures safety on highways and runways, currently Martin County's largest privately held manufacturing enterprise, Water Blasting Technologies, uh, is breaking ground on a 65,000 square foot uh, facility that will enable the creation of more than 100 new jobs. By unifying its five buildings into a single purpose factory, the total 100,000 square foot facility aims to maximize efficiencies across an expanded product line uh, with intents of adding 130 new jobs over the next three years to its current roster of 150 team members. Nice. So some good nice. things going on down in Martin County. So mm -hmm. got the BAP program getting started, got trainings cranking back up, got the new academic year starting next week at Indian River State College, uh, got our kickoff volleyball game Monday night. So got a lot going on, Greg. Academic. Yes, well, academic go, year. I'll, I'll go to my thesaurus. <laughs> So speaking of a lot going on in business, there is a lot going on in business today, and uh, things are busy. Again, we've uh, we've kind of forced ourselves to do a little more with uh, less folks as the uh, economy kind of um, went through some changes over the last decade. So again, we want to talk tonight a little bit about how to build that high-performing team, uh, how to build a culture uh, where the employees uh, can can stay with you and you reduce that turnover rate. And I want to start. Uh, our conversation this evening with, with our very own Catherine Colhane, the Associate Director here at the Florida SBDC at Indian River State College. So again, welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you, Tom. So just uh, start real quickly, Catherine, a little background uh, on your business background, kind of your sure. pathway to the uh, Florida SBDC at IRSC. Sure. My pathway really and actually still does involve to a great extent my role at SBDC is to work with our clients, especially in, the, in growth mode, small to medium 
enterprises that have been, they've gotten themselves up and running, they're, they're ready to expand, and their, their need, as always, at, at those crucial times is capital access, getting, getting connected to the right lending sources. It's tough. It, it seems very difficult and intimidating, but we are very, very well connected throughout the financial, er, um, all of our colleagues for years, and my background was banking. So I came into the SBDC primarily to work with our clients um, as opposed to being the lender, which I did for many years, and saying no, which I had to do too, too often. I got connected to the SBDC where I could help people figure out how to get ready and get out there and qualify for a loan. So that that's probably the you know the most one of the you most sp you important. You spent a number of years in banking yourself. Twenty five years. years. Yeah, a long time in banking. So a lot of your work at the SBDC is helping those clients. It continues to kind be. of weave their way through the the process of getting loans and it, getting capital and. It certainly it okay. we do, and we're doing a, a well, as you know we we work with. Um, the disaster loan and the emergency loan program. So when those come, and we are the agency that provides that connection to those programs, that be, that's during very crucial times that we're operating like that in emergency situations. So it, it's important that we keep it, keep up with it, and we're on top of it. And it's probably the the one um, desire that most of our businesses come in to talk about first blush. They want to know how can I get how can I get some some money right. some working capital a line of credit um, I'm not sure I've been turned down you know I really need to understand it so I mean we're there to, to set up the business plan move them in the right direction in the right way with getting their cash flow analyzed understanding their numbers it, it, you can't go to a bank and say hey I need a loan and, and not completely right. understand the intricacies of your business, how your cash flow works. Right. And a lot of our clients, they just, they are working hard on their businesses. They're in growth mode. They don't always have that right. all ready to go. So we can work with that, and we do. We, as a, we're a great team, and I'm, right. I don't do that alone. I have a great team of people that I work with, right. our, our colleagues at SBDC, Indian River yeah. State College. And you guys did an amazing job right after Hurricane oh. Irma. Well, we we uh, processed about 52 applications and, yeah, we did. and did about 36 loans and helped some people, you know, get access to capital that, that they needed in that tough situation. Um now, within the ranks of the SBDC, of course, we have specialists. We've got a government uh, procurement specialist that will help uh, clients, you know, walk their way through the process of, of getting ready for government contracting. Uh, we have financial specialists that will help people better understand their financials and, uh, and get a handle on those financials and business finances. And, and Catherine, one of your specialties is really in, in kind of the HR uh, department, uh, human resources. And you that's a passion of mine, Tom. Yeah, I'm so, so this is what I really want to talk about. Right. It's all important. There's not, I mean, business people need our support and advocacy in all these areas. But one of the areas that I'm tremendously interested in is organizational development and um, team building. And I actually, watching in the banking world culture, the needs that I saw and the lack of communication sometimes and our I hate oh to use really? the word because I love my banking buddies to this day and I and I still do. But in most organizations, if you think about the number one problem in most organizations, and this is going to apply to small businesses as well as, well as large, only thirty two percent of their employees say they're engaged at all in working and, and being enthusiastic and reaching the goals. And this is a tough, tough thing to get your arms around as a business owner so and as a leader. So one of the areas that we have adopted, and I'm, I'm thrilled that we've done it at SBDC throughout the state of Florida, is a program called DISC and Driving Forces. And we now can offer that to our clients. We can bring that in and we work with you on your premises to, to develop these assessments and these personality profiles so that people really start to understand how they're, in, how they're interacting, how this can be improved, how communication can be improved. Build a trust level in the environment. Um, I speak a lot about culture because if you don't know what your culture is, somebody does, probably your customer. And, you know, they're, they're going to know if, if th that culture is supportive, is building, is productive and positive. Everybody needs to represent that. 
and you represent that best when you're engaged and excited about doing your work every day. So I'm, I love this program. I find it, it works with our team at the SBDC. We've all been through it. We've all been actually gotten a lot of great insights through it about ways we can connect better and use our strength where people are actually <coughs> operating from their strengths. Talk about talk about how a company you know needs to to go about building that right culture that that a business owner should be creating in that business for the employees. Sure, because you know I think a lot of people don't understand how much power they actually have in just walking in the door each morning. The owner, the wh whatever level you're at in that company, what you bring each day to your workplace is is really what contributes to the culture. The culture is, it's like the, the fish swimming in the, the, the fish bowl. The water that surrounds you, you're in it. It's the culture that you, you need that's going to provide the nourishment and the, and the support to keep doing what you do so well. Um, so absolutely, these, these team building, these assessments bring out everybody's strengths. There's no, there's no one better than the other. We all bring something unique and special to the table, and this helps our, our clients, whether it's a, a team of two or a team of 20, really understand how they can connect better and how they can actually access who they are at their strongest and I'll maybe allow somebody else to take the lead or the stage when that person appears to be the best fit. Yeah. It's a great, especially for change management, and we're in change management all the time. We're all in a culture of change everywhere. So uh, again, kind of, uh, you know, speaking about the culture of a business and, and, and the culture that, that uh, employees work within, I want to, I want to again introduce um, our, our, our next guest, uh, Julie Murphy. Again, welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you, thank you. And, and you know, uh, she talked about, Catherine talks about the team building and the importance of culture. I mean, you know, uh, let's start just real quickly, though, with a little bit of your background before we get in your, your techniques and your culture with dealing with, with the work-life balance and, and uh, you know, those issues in a business. But give us a little bit of your business background and your pathway to your current occupation. Yes, of course. And in fact, it was an unexpected pathway because most of my career was in the technology industry, um, in business development and sales in South Africa, which is where I'm from, the UK, Europe, and then ultimately in the United States. And so I worked in um, high pressure, demanding corporate life, and then also had the opportunity to work in a very interesting and exciting startup opportunity in South Florida. So I learned a lot of skills there and then ultimately moved on to create my own yoga and mindfulness meditation business. So if you had said to me, I used to, I used these techniques myself um, as, a, as a practitioner, but not, never as a teacher. And if you had said to me 15 years ago, one day you're going to teach this, I would have just <laughs> laughed. Because my, my personality is actually naturally very type A personality, very driven, very impatient, and possibly the no, opposite. No, wait a minute. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is yeah. no it's way. absolutely true. Ah. <laughs> That's impossible. <clears throat> and this is what's so funny. is we think of yoga, meditation, mindfulness, we think that it's only really for people who know how to be lovely and calm <laughs> and nice to everybody <laughs> and a little bit of a Mother Teresa. And I promise you that's not what I am. But <laughs> <laughs> through... Well, we, we, can, we can ask your husband about that? <laughs> <is> that <laughs> right. Well, um, he used to actually ask me if I'd come, come home from work after a really tough day and was really frazzled, he would look at me and say, you haven't been to yoga, have you? And then he would gently <laughs> encourage me, in other right. words, demand that I go, because he could see what those practices did for me, you know, physically, right. mentally, emotionally, just kind of resetting the balance. So that's right. how I landed up doing this. Bef and again, before we get into, uh, which I'm excited and, and anxious to get into, uh, the, the concepts and, and your thoughts on all this, but talk just first here just a, just a minute about about your your business your current business and and the products that you you currently offer okay so my products and services are really things that have helped me in the past and now i'm offering and and presently and now i'm offering those to other people there are two main areas there are my meditation recordings so covering everything from just a two-minute break you know you're in your car and you just need a few minutes to just 
breathe and settle your mind um, while you're not driving <laughs> for these techniques um, to really even up to an hour of guided meditation, just simply lying down and listening to guided meditation to bring the mind to a quieter place. And so that's a major focus of mine. And one of the other things that we do to really support this concept of healthy mind, healthy body and happy heart is we provide international yoga retreats. And so we take people to fabulous places. We immerse them in nature. Nature is really important. List. That's <laughs> right. We haven't forgotten. Everywhere from you know Guatemala to Costa Rica to South Africa, we took a big group to South Africa, where you're really with like-minded people and you're you're unplugging so that you can you know come to a place of more ease oh you right. got to talk to carol <laughs> yeah that, that sounds, that sounds like a good trip for you and carol right oh man that <laughs> sounds well, awesome let me get this i want to get this out of the way early i mean you, you talk about meditation and again there's you know folks all always have their preconceived ideas about meditation i mean is, is meditation a religious act or you know uh, taking part in religion i mean how kind of kind of describe all that and, and the, I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that because there's so many misconceptions about meditation and about yoga and it is not a religion it is not a religion you could do it religiously um you know you you take meditation it's a it's a mindset it's a lifestyle commitment it's a philosophy it's a way to live your life it's clinically researched by all the great um, you know medical resources that you can find if you google meditation and research it's researched it has been researched for many years scientific research on its benefits it is it, it's not a not a religion but definitely something that we would recommend in in a daily lifestyle and speaking of google if yes. you think about the fact that google one of the major um, desired places to work and produce they have integrated meditation into their workplace on a regular yes on a regular basis seamlessly and it's it's extremely effective and on a normal work day Y yes. Yeah, yes, really? sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. great. Now, um, Julie, again, you you know you talked about um, you you teach yoga, uh, and you've been teaching yoga since 2007, and you completed uh, your 500 hours of advanced training in India. I mean, talk a little bit about that training. I mean, what what was involved in that oh. 500 hours? You know, I had done quite a lot of teaching by that stage, and I wanted to go to a different level, I guess. I, I, I didn't need to know how many more ways were there to do a yoga pose, you know, how to stand on your head or the physical aspects of yoga. Um, I really wanted to go to the source, I guess. I wanted to find out more about the psychology of yoga, mm -hmm. the philosophy of yoga. And India is very much an ancient country. It's so much more ancient than our civilization. It's even if you spent a year there, you'd just be scratching the surface of how deeply they live yoga. They don't go to yoga with a yoga mat and do an exercise class. The philosophies mm -hmm. of yoga are built into their daily lives for as, as children. They are taught philosophy and psychology of yoga. And I wanted to tap into that that right. makes sense it seemed yeah. like the best yes. place to go uh, and again now you talked about being involved in in the tech industry and and some high stress corporate jobs uh, you know you you've seen that side of it and now of course you're on obviously the the other side of that trying to help people understand how to deal with that stress and how to deal deal in those corporate cultures talk about your concept of the work life balance i mean this is a big you know i was watching a show the other night and they were interviewing this new young uh coach of the la rams oh. a very young guy mm -hmm. and uh the, the one of the questions was about his his uh his work ethic and the work hours and, and his response was i got to get better at a work-life balance and i thought <laughs> there it is again i mean there's work-life balance oh, i mean yeah. so it is a big issue today in business but talk about your concept of this work-life balance issue well, uh, in the before I was teaching these um, methods and I was doing them myself, I was reading a lot about um, how to be more balanced and how to create more um, ease in my daily work and yet still be full on and still be producing and, and committing to targets and, and getting business done. 
And there was a book that I read that was called Meditations for Women Who Do Too Much. Oh. So this is for overachievers or people who want to do everything oh. perfectly. And I thought, that's perfect. I'm going to have everything <laughs> nailed by, you know, day three. <laughs> and there was a short meditation for every day and a short reading that just kind of put your mind in a place of, oh, that's interesting. How does that apply to me? And just take a few minutes to read and sit quietly and meditate. And I knew that I had a problem with work-life balance at that point when I realized I was reading it in the car at a traffic light. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was stationary. You think? <laughs> I wasn't using my cell phone, but I was frantically, quickly reading it because I hadn't read it yet and I needed to squeeze this in somehow. And I took a deep breath and laughed at myself and thought, okay, this, this, is just, this just shows me how out of balance I have allowed things to get. And really, Tom, it's up to us. We're the ones who set the boundaries. We're the ones who instill the discipline in how we want to live our lives. And now, I don't know that in our world, um, you know, in 2018 and, and how and where we live, I don't know that we'll ever achieve 100% perfect balance. I don't know if that's even necessarily the aim. But um, at least being aware of when we are completely out of balance, and then how to address that and right. and using these 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 techniques to even be aware of how we live and how we think and, and when we're out of control or overstressed. Just to well, notice even our whether we're breathing in a shallow manner or a deep in a deep way changes in an instant. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I, I love the word you know, boundaries. You you use use that word and, and I think that that that's a really appropriate word in today's uh, high tech mm -hmm. technology world because you know we uh, folks that uh, folks mm -hmm. in the uh, in in high tech world and in just basic corporations they're so connected all the time now because exactly. because of your smartphones your mm -hmm. you know the internet I mean this is this had has had a big effect on how folks uh, function in the workplace because they're just constantly on and constantly uh, connected I mean how how has technology affected this whole concept concept of trying to escape and, and leave it at the office? It's hindered and helped um, in, in many ways. This accelerating speed at which we live, it's, it's the perfect time even more now than 20, 30 years ago for people to use these practices because we are being bombarded all the time by technology. And our attention span has gone down, you know, I think it's something eight remarkable, seconds. like eight seconds, eight right? Eight seconds That's right. is what uh, you have uh, in attention span right. to get a, yeah, <laughs> and I, I always use that for well, my mine Where are we? <laughs> you know, well, mine was a lot less than that. So I will. <laughs> And that's true. Uh, often it's even less than that. Yeah. And so technology has been fantastic. Look what it's enabling us to do today with this radio program, for mm -hmm. example. But it shouldn't rule our lives. And so there's just some simple techniques like setting a time to, you could set alarms on your wonderful technology gadget, your phone. Um, not just the alarm to wake up, but you know, setting an alarm for if you go to bed at, say, 10.30 at night, or you go to sleep at 10.30 at night, setting an alarm an hour and a half beforehand to stop all connections with all mm -hmm. devices. Give yourself That's such a good idea. at least an hour, Honestly. at least an hour. So you use your devices to help you be mindful. You could set an alarm um, for noontime every day to just remind you to stop what you're doing and to, to breathe and take a few minutes of, of mindfulness and perhaps some sort of meditative practice. So there, there are ways to use these gadgets and techniques to help us. And then, of course, even if you think of all the apps that we have, the meditation apps, there's a fantastic free app called Insight Timer, and um, that app you could use for your own meditations. Mm -hmm. um, some my stuff, some of my stuff is on there. But there are literally thousands and thousands of different types of meditations that you can use through these devices. So, wow. yeah. And it's called what? Insight. I N S I G H T. Okay. Timer. T I M E R. Okay. It's a free app and. Uh, you can do everything from really short meditations to a really long one that may help you go to sleep at night. You know, it was interesting. CBS News, uh, Radio News, did something on uh, you talk about the uh, connected devices before you go to sleep. 
Mm-hmm. The fact that your mind races for a long period of time, yeah. if you've been on a screen, whether it's a, a iPad or whether it's your phone. Mm-hmm. Or the TV. Or the t- oh, sure, TV. Sure, obviously, yeah. Can't watch TV an hour before bedtime. I'm afraid huh? not. Tom's oh. all over. There's nothing. And nothing certainly on. not the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've got the 300 <laughs> channels. I still can't find anything to watch. But what you know, you use the term mindfulness. It, mm-hmm. it, kind of explain that term to us. Well, it's about paying attention to how we think and how we behave, and so that through paying that attention, we we notice who we are. And when we step back a little bit from just being in an automated way of living and working and rushing to the next task, when we are mindful, we're able to pause and notice our thoughts, notice our habitual patterns. There could be patterns of the way that we eat or unhealthy habits that we have. It could be thought patterns, things that we think about ourselves or other people. It could be belief systems, things that pop up that we're not even aware of how we are and who we are until we pause and become mindful in the present moment. And, and you know, you just used another term just now, too, habits. Hmm. I mean, is this really, I mean, is it, does it really boil down to just, you know, a lot of bad habits that we may have, you know, created over the years and and is it a matter of really kind of stopping and saying i've got to change some habits i've I've got to you know i've got to to get into a better routine better eating you know uh, more rest uh you know is it is it kind of you know organizing those habits and changing the bad ones and creating some new good ones and does it still take 30 days to change <laughs> six, uh, weeks. Ha- <laughs> six weeks okay it's longer now okay I, i've never heard that stat is that yeah. that's a real stat yes. it takes but six weeks to change a bad habit well did you to know that 75 percent of statistics are incorrect <laughs> <laughs> there you go well, that I did not I like, hear. hold on i'm getting that down <laughs> 75 percent of statistics are incorrect okay <laughs> Including that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so talk to me about habits, bad so habits. habits. And you know, I would even reframe that. I wouldn't call it a bad habit. We are so hard on ourselves. We're mm-hmm. so tough on ourselves. And so it becomes easier for us to make change when we just accept that we are human beings. These are human habits. These are things that we have acquired in our lifetime because of whatever. It doesn't matter how, what's brought us there through the mindfulness practices and the meditation practices, we're able to, first of all, notice them. That's the first thing. And then secondly, bring them into the open and begin a a practical, realistic way of addressing them. And And we can actually change the circuitry in our brain. Change the circuitry of the brain. Through this meditation and mindfulness. That's right. So those patterned responses, we actually can have some control that's scientifically proven Mm -hmm. it can change change those patterns um you know in in uh reviewing uh, your website and reviewing um you know what you're you're doing uh with with all the great work that that you're involved in i i loved this uh it it talked about you have a concept that if it doesn't change your life it's not yoga (laughs) so so talk to us a little bit about that Um, this is where it goes beyond the physical practice of yoga. And so the phys- physical practice of yoga as an exercise is fantastic. Of course it is, all of the benefits that you get from exercise. But to me, and that's how I began yoga many, many, many years ago, um, was mainly for the physical exercise and to de-stress. And then what, what happens, and it kind of sneaks up on you, Um, is that you start to notice the other benefits. You start to notice the mental benefits, the emotional benefits, the, you know, just the, how your whole mind-body system starts to benefit from these ancient um, techniques. And that's when it can be life-changing. So um, when you become more aware of how you live and why you live, then you're equipped to make informed choices and decisions on how you're going to spend the rest of your hour, the rest of your day, the rest of your life. And that, to me, was and continues to be life-changing. Now, now, obviously, your specialty and and your uh, uh, area of expertise is is meditation and yoga. Talk a little bit about, though, 
if if for some people can it be another activity is there is it is it important if it's not yoga i, I remember you know as a as a young person uh, my mother played bridge and she was she was a nurse and and you know put in her shifts and mm-hmm. and um as uh, as your husband uh, said to you one time you, you haven't been to yoga i could tell when my mother had played bridge <laughs> um uh, much more relaxed uh, you know you could tell she had she had had a good afternoon when she she had a, a, a bridge event to go to so is it important if it's not yoga is it important for everybody to at least find something that helps them relieve the stress after work and I think I think there's probably two parts of an answer to that and and the one is what your mother was doing was work-life balance because looking at the various aspects of our lives that need to be in balance there's work and there's social and she was she was catering to that social need there's family there's alone time, good alone time, good contemplative alone time. There's outdoor time, you know, being in nature. There's physical exercise time. And then there's also just having fun and play time. So those tend to be the areas of our lives that are in balance. And she, she was doing, um, I suspect, through bridge, you know, through the socializing, she was creating some, some um, happy balance in her life. When it comes to meditation, you don't have to sit in a meditative yoga pose and be in, in any kind of prescriptive form of meditation. But what we are looking for um, is doing things meditatively. For example, when people um, swim, you know, swim length after length, and it becomes a in a, in a long swimming pool, and they they they're focused only on the action at that moment. I kind of call it in the zone. In right? the zone, in the and zone. everything else disappears. Right. It could be sitting on a beach, watching a sunset, and truly being in the present moment. Mm-hmm. And so, when we're in the present moment, we're no longer fearful about the future or regretful about the past we're doing something that brings us into the now and into the present moment. So you could certainly be doing things that are meditative and you could be doing you know, formal or structured types of, of meditation. All right. Now, I know you mentioned, um, you know, when you were talking about uh, giving you kind of your introduction and, and, uh, and talking about your business and what you do, you, you touched on the yoga retreats. But, I mean, these are sounds so innovative and interesting again kind of kind of give us a few details about what do you do when you take a group on a yoga retreat well first of all we have a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the opportunity to really unplug we do yoga every day and we pick beautiful locations where you can really um, absorb and appreciate nature and we, uh, we have healthy food and um, we, ha- we have a program that will, depending on where we are, have yoga at least once a day, and then we get to absorb the culture of where we are. And for, for somebody that could be literally sitting, we, we just did a retreat in Guatemala, we go there once or twice a year, it could be literally sitting on a, a beautiful lake and staring out at these beautiful volcanoes um, over a beautiful lake scene and watching the hummingbirds and doing nothing during your free time on these retreats, nothing but relaxing and contemplating, writing in your journal. Or you could be one of those people that comes with us and wants to visit every village on the <laughs> lake and wants to learn how to speak Spanish and how to, to do Mayan cooking. And, and that's okay too. We're providing a beautiful environment for like-minded people to unplug completely because what happens, unplug from your daily responsibilities because what happens then is you're able to really take stock of where you are right now and you, you're able to create a pause, you know, create a, a stop and decide how you're going to be when you go back home. Now, uh, talk to us about the day you met the Dalai Lama. Aha. <laughs> so, um, I am not a, a Buddhist, but I certainly appreciate a lot of the um, Buddhist lessons about mindfulness and acceptance, and it was very much evident on that wonderful day. I had just completed two months of, of living in India, and I, uh, my training was in the town where the Dalai Lama lives. It's way up in the northern part of India, near the Himalayas. And I thought, oh, this is fantastic. I'm, I'm going to get to see the Dalai Lama. 
And every day, every day, I hoped that this was going to be the day that I was going to see him in his hometown, in this Tibetan community. And I never did. And I kept hearing from locals about how he had, oh, you just missed him. He's just driven off to the airport because he has a lot of international engagements. Or he's going to be here the week after you leave and he's addressing, you know, the whole the whole town. And finally, uh, I was flying out. I was on this tiny little aircraft, um, you know, flying back to, to Delhi to start connecting with my international flights. And I was sitting just thinking about my uh, yoga training and thinking, you know, it was so perfect. Um, and I, I couldn't change anything about it. And I didn't get to see the Dalai Lama at all. But, you know, maybe I'll end up seeing him one day when he <laughs> comes to Florida. Um, and I'm absolutely content with that. So I had reached this place of contentment, which, of course, is a big Buddhist insight, where I thought it doesn't matter that I didn't see him um, speak. I, I still had the most fantastic experience, and it was perfect. And then I became aware. <laughs> um, the whole story is on, is on my website. There's a whole story with photographs. But I became aware that he was actually sitting two rows oh, in front of me. That is no way. On the airplane. I could see his head from where <laughs> I was sitting. <laughs> and I met him. Oh, incredible. And I don't remember how I levitated <laughs> towards him. I somehow <laughs> found myself sitting within two or three feet of oh. him and just holding his hands and staring at him like a child and just absolute amazement that this uh, this beautiful human being with so much peace within him was there in front of me. And you know, people have said to me, well, what did he say? What did he say? And I said, he said nothing. And then they said, well, what did you say? Yeah. What did you say? I said, I said nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally, yeah, it was just so special mm -hmm. to just sit and smile and be in the presence of somebody who truly lives mindfulness right. and peace and, and do nothing but, but um, smile at him. What a great story. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and what, I, what I love to think about is when getting back to the small businesses and the people that are out there working every day that maybe they're not going to be able to go on a retreat or, or do anything that's right now, at least, they're too immersed in their businesses, that there are still ways to integrate these principles in that workplace and create that in that culture. And some of your thoughts about that. There are, and yes. you can do those sorts of things at home. You can create your own yoga retreat at home, and you can create some of these mindfulness practices in in the workplace. Right. And so you, uh, earlier when we spoke about just setting your alarm to mm -hmm. to pause, perhaps it's not even once a day, perhaps it's every hour, depending on your mm -hmm. work schedule, where literally you pause, you stop everything that you're doing, unless, of course, you're in you're in a meeting, um, but you stop everything that you're doing. Or maybe you especially when you're in oh. a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the Good meeting, idea. right? <laughs> you might have to do it a bit more um, unobviously then. Yes. But to simply pause and do what you said earlier, breathe. Breathe, yeah. There Thank is, uh, it is remarkable what true breathing can do. When we pause and we notice, so for the listeners now, even if you're driving, don't close your eyes, don't close your eyes, but if you're driving, just notice, just pause. This is your pause moment. Are you gripping the steering wheel? Are you gripping your jaw? Are you gripping your stomach muscles? Is there tension in your shoulders? And just by simply relaxing that and yet still being aware and attentive to the road, it's the same as being mindful in any kind of activity, just noticing how you are in this moment and then pausing and taking a deep inhale through the nose mm -hmm. and, and, and then an exhale. Sounds great. You know, <laughs> and um, at the end of all this, I mean, you, while you're engaged in it, you know, in helping businesses and business owners and employees understand how to better deal with the stress. I mean, you are an entrepreneur yourself. I mean, you. This is a business for you. So, uh, you know, talk a little bit about how how you as an entrepreneur are putting all this together, and then how you integrate this in in your own life. Because I mean, you're 
you're engaged in trying to launch a business yourself. That's right. And I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. And so um, I do workshops and I have private clients and I have corporate clients. You know, where I, I will go in and, and teach people different methods and techniques. Um, but a really good way for me to reach lots of people is through the Internet. And so mm -hmm. that's how, for me, through a series of recordings, um, and uh, not just on meditation, but on how to meditate, a series of um, podcasts that I'm planning um, and on, um, on these apps that we've spoken about, just ways to get this out. That's how I'm making myself more, more um, productive with less effort, is sharing my message with multiple thousands of people at once mm -hmm. and literally around the world. And of course you found our team at the SBDC to help with some of that process, That's which right. to allow you to do what you do so well and have us help you in other ways to move that business forward in the ways it needs to happen. Yes, I'm yeah. so appreciative of that. Thank you. It's uh, it's been uh, so far so interesting, and I'm <laughs> looking forward to the next bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, again, we're kind of closing in on on the end, so I don't I I never want to forget. So, how would folks get in touch with you? How do folks see what it is that you do? And and uh, you are currently uh, providing, like you said, uh, you are currently working with businesses, um, uh, you know, and working with employees. So, how would someone find out more about what you do and, and how to get in touch with you. So the, thank you for that. The best way to reach me is through my website and I will spell it for you. It's yogaresa.com Y-O-G-A-R-E-S-S-A dot com and that um, word yogaresa is a made up word that a dear friend bestowed on me and it kind of stuck. Um, but if you if you Google that, you'll find me everywhere. I'm on the Insight Timer Meditation app for people who do Spotify. They listen to meditation mm -hmm. on Spotify. I'm on Spotify. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Amazon. So as far as the recordings are concerned, everything is, is available um, on the website. Or to get in touch with me about general, uh, um, general information, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank now, you for that. And again, you know, for a company that's got multiple of employees, and, and uh, Catherine pointed out, you know, the work we do with, with disc training and, and uh, team training and team building, I mean, we'll work with companies that, you know, have a handful of employees or have hundreds of employees. But how important is it for a company that's got multiple employees that, that they really deal with this, this issue of work-life balance? You know, I think one of the one of the statistics out there that we even teach in, in some of our management classes is, you know, it's, it's no longer just about the paycheck anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. young millennials are, are looking at different aspects of business now. It's what attracts them uh, to businesses. And, of course, Catherine pointed out Google. And, of course, every young millennial would love to go to work mm -hmm. for Google and that type of culture. Talk about how important it is that, that a business understand this, that, that it's not about the paycheck anymore. You're absolutely right. It's about retention and it's about happy employees. And when employees are happy because they're also getting their work done and they're excited about their work, then that's that's when they want to stay um, with the company. And so with, with meditation and mindfulness techniques, what you're doing is you are creating a more efficient and productive workforce who thinks with more clarity, who sleeps better at night and is m more aware of how their colleagues think and work and they learn how to interact w in business relationships. What I will say though is that's not really the goal of mindfulness. The goal of mindfulness in the workplace is actually not to be more um, productive and more profitable, it is the outcome it's the result of doing the mindfulness. Mm -hmm. The right. goal of mindfulness is to learn about yourself so that you can fit better into this world and with the people around you. And it certainly adds to creativity. Yes, yes, yes it does. So one of, my, uh, one of my favorite questions to always ask is when we have folks on uh, like you, uh, an entrepreneur, but, but an entrepreneur with kind of a, a mission for business. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your advice for the, for the aspiring entrepreneur, the person that wants to start a, a business, has an idea, has a, has a skill set or a knowledge like yourself? What, what have you learned in, in, in you know, uh, launching your, your business venture? Be brave, <laughs> be bold, be patient, be realistic, 
be forgiving of mistakes. Mistakes are what teach us everything. And don't forget to breathe. I don't forget to breathe. <laughs> well, and that was going to be my other question is, now what's your advice uh, uh, in terms of the, the meditation for the entrepreneur? So it's breathe. <laughs> It's take at least two minutes every day. And if you think you can't do two minutes, you need at least an hour. <laughs> so take at least two minutes every day. Hopefully it becomes five or 10 <laughs> where you simply pause, put the pause button on and become aware of the present moment every day. All right, Julie. Uh, we appreciate all of uh, your advice on how we unwind after the mm -hmm. work day. And, and again, this is really, and, and I've, I've kind of stressed the unwinding part and the stressful part, but I think Catherine also touched on it. It's really about being a better uh, te team member and being oh, a better, sure. uh, more creative uh, employee and, and uh, team member. I mean, that's, that's a big part of this too. These are it techniques is. that help you perform better. It is, uh, absolutely right. Okay. All right, with that, we will uh, bring to close another segment of Startup Talk. I want to thank our guests this evening. Catherine, thank you. Thank you. It was great to be here. I enjoyed every minute of that. Julie, we appreciate uh, uh, you taking time out this evening and uh, kind of teaching us a few techniques to, to get through our workday. So we appreciate it, Julie. Well, thank you very much. And also thank you for looking after people like me, who is a business of one. So <laughs> yes. that's, uh, I really it's appreciate that. Important. Small well, we, business. Listen, we, we love it. It's been a we, pleasure. We appreciate it. Um, so again, I want to remind everyone uh, that all the business assistance programs and resources discussed on this segment are available through any member of state colleges, Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. And uh, for more information, you can always go to that irscbiz.com. That's irscbiz.com. As always, want to thank our partners, Greg and, and uh, his team here at WPSL, uh, WSTU and WPSL TV. So with that, we will talk to you next week on Startup Talk. Don't bother me. I'm meditating. <laughs>